The annual report for 2009-10 covers a period where the Scottish Police Service had to maintain its concentration on delivering a quality service to the public, whilst against the backdrop of increasing concerns around the budgets for future years. During this period, I carried out a number of inspection activities right across all eight forces and together as thematic inspections. And I've found that, generally speaking, and to a high level, the public in Scotland can have real confidence in the police service that polices their local communities. During the year, uh, we carried out a thematic inspection jointly with the Inspector of Prosecutions in Scotland, which looked at how the Proceeds of Crime Act had been implemented in the last few years right across the entire Scottish landscape. And what we found that whilst there'd been some real progress in how th the Act was implemented, particularly against those serious and organised criminals who occupy the top tier of criminality in Scotland. We felt that there could be much more done in looking at criminals who caused real problems to local communities. So expanding the activities of the police service jointly with the Crown as well into that area of criminality could have a real benefit. I'm pleased to say that following the report and the recommendations that we jointly made, the police service and Scottish Government have taken them up and we've seen additional resources made available in order to tackle that very element of criminality and also to report more effectively to the Crown and Procurator Fiscal Service so that more assets could be recovered and that criminals can be hit where it hurts the most in their pocket. What I found when I looked at the system of reporting cases, it seemed clear that some of them got bogged down, some of them didn't proceed as quickly as could have been made to happen and therefore there was an element of frustration on the part of the police service uh, and it would have to be said on the part of prosecutors as well. We looked at being able to streamline that system and work with prosecutors in order to enable the, the quicker proceeding of the various uh, crimes that were getting reported under the Act. What I'm pleased to say again is that this has been very looked at closely by uh, colleagues in the Crown and Procura Procurator Fiscal Service. Um, and we are expecting to see uh, significant improvements in that area in the future. The feedback that we receive in, in the media and from the public um, is that they are genuinely concerned about those criminals um, who have committed offences uh, which are serious and against serious offences against the person. Now, MAP arrangements, which is the multi-agency public protection arrangements, have been in place for a number of years now. Uh, and they have worked very well in improving how that kind of offender is managed back into local communities. This report, jointly with the Inspector of Prisons and with the Social Work Inspection Agency, uh, we looked at how those range arrangements were working, but as well as broader across the management of offenders who are at risk of serious harm. What we found was that there had been great progress, uh, but that better joint working still could be done to improve even further the quality of management that these types of offenders were getting. And then, a knock-on effect being, the better protection of the public from those kinds of offenders. So we made a number of recommendations into how those improvements could be made. Principally for the police, it was about establishing some standards, standards that they could look towards to ensure that the type of offender care that was being given and the management of those offenders was of the very best and highest quality. During the year, I looked at attendance management across all of Scotland's eight police forces, and I was very pleased to be able to report that the absence of police officers and police staff has been going down for a number of years. And in fact, those rates uh, are better than the rest of the UK for police services uh, and better than the public sector as a whole. So I was very happy that I could, was able to find that, uh, that fact. As always, you can look for areas of improving upon the situation. Uh, and I made a couple of recommendations around how that could be done. One of which was to better understand the costs involved in sickness absence and use that as part of the decision making to help inform the impact that absence has on the police service. The second was around regulations. Now for some time this has been a very high quality of service delivered to those who unfortunately find themselves in the position of being unwell whether that's occupational health, well-being, return to work interviews and so on. 
unfortunately for a small minority who are who do not engage with those kind of processes, there are very few options left over to the ser open to the service and able to see an end point to it. So what we recommended was that the service talk to government around police regulations to see whether or not they could be improved so that both the employer and employee had a clearer understanding of where they stood. What I've found is that that has been taken on board and that new regulations are being formulated with a view to addressing those very issues. One thing is absolutely clear, that the public sector, right across Scotland, is facing an unprecedented pressure on their budgets. Now, we don't know the exact scale of that yet. We have some indications, but final figures won't be known until some point in November when the final budgets are put together. I'm encouraged by the fact that the police service has taken a grip of this, has put real effort into looking at the effects across a range of options on the service that's delivered. At core is ensuring that what is preserved is what's most important, and that is the delivery of a quality service to local communities and looking at those very high priority areas that the public in Scotland know and deserve to have a service delivered to them, such as serious and violent offences, such as counter-terrorism, such as antisocial behaviour. These areas are a priority to the service and are the areas in which resources will need to be maintained going forward. Now, there's undoubtedly going to be an impact. The scale of that impact is something that's yet to be known, uh, but what we can do is plan the best way possible, uh, and I'm encouraged that that is taking place.